Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. A lot is happening right now, and 30th anniversary news came out. I have an idea of what y'all thought about that, and I have my own thoughts, but today we're not really here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the cards moving the most. Again, in today's video, the threshold is going to be $2. We're not going to discuss a card unless it's moving at least $2 up or down, but there's plenty to discuss. Commander in general is moving a lot of card prices. Dominar United products came out not too long ago. A lot of people are building decks around many of those cards. Warhammer 40k decks just dropped. Many players are trying to upgrade those. Brothers War previews are starting to move some prices as well. We're going to dig into all of it. Quickly though, before we get started, just a fast reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use the Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pick up a lot of the new products there. I'll put links down below for what is in stock currently, but keep checking back because there are a lot of things coming and going all the time. And remember, if your order's over $100 or consists only of singles, shipping will be free in the United States. Also, whenever you use the Heroes promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you. And without any further ado, let's get into it. Let's start things off with the standard legal spotlight. This is where we talk about the standard legal cards moving the most this week. Only two to discuss, though. Graveyard Trespasser is our first one. It's down 202 to 929, and this is the Innistrad Double Feature copy, which is still inflated, even though it is coming down a little bit. It is just hard to find for sale online currently. The Innistrad Midnight Hunt copy is much easier to find. It's much cheaper. That set had a wider release. And in addition, there were three copies of that particular card in the Demir Control Standard Challenger deck earlier this year. When it comes to gameplay, this is seeing a lot of play in Standard. It's in two popular decks there, Mono Black and Rakdos Midrange, as well as others. In Pioneer, it's in a couple popular decks there too. Rakdos Midrange, which is doing very well right now, and Abzan Greasefang. It's in more decks in that format as well, though. And this does get a little commander play. It does appear at times in a new build around a card from Dominara United. Shieldred the Apocalypse. And the last card in this section is Liliana of the Veil. Vale. The Innistrad copy is down 285 to 6864. The Ultimate Masters copy is down 338 to 6181. So this was reprinted in Dominar United, making it standard and pioneer legal, but also it added a lot of new copies to the marketplace. That's why these older ones are losing some value right now. In standard, this is also in mono black and Rakdos midrange, plus much more. Pioneer, this is another card found in Rakdos Midrange, Abzan Greasefang, and more there. And you already know, this has been a solid modern card for a long time. It's in Jund, The Rock, sometimes Rakdos Midrange Scam, and it is getting additional commander play now too in new builds like Braids of Risen Nightmare, Shieldred the Apocalypse, and Jody the Unifier. That quickly brings us to the Pioneer Legal Spotlight. We do have one card going down, then some going up. Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth from the list is that card going down. It is down $214 to $40. This was in the list for Modern Horizons 2 through Innistrad Crimson Vow. Now, this copy is retracting after some recent increases. Nothing too unusual here. It sees a lot of play. In Pioneer, this is in Rakdos Midrange and Sacrifice, as well as other decks. In Modern, this is in Yawgmoth. In Legacy, you see this in Golgari Depths, Colorless Cloudpost. Plus, it is a huge commander card in many different builds, including some new ones like Shield of the Apocalypse, Braids of Risen Nightmare, and Jota the Unifier. It is also a good upgrade to the Dominara United Legends Legacy Commander deck, and shows up in fresh builds around the front facing commander from there as well, the Hada Binder of Wills. And like I mentioned in the intro, a lot of people are trying to upgrade Warhammer 40k decks now too. I've seen players pick this up for the deck called the Ruinous Powers, and others are putting it in fresh builds around a card from there, Balakor the Dark Master. First card moving up today is the Chain Veil. Vale. This is the copy from the list. It goes up 219 this week to 2999. And this was in the list from Zendikar Rising through Midnight Hunt. It is getting a lot of pioneer play now in Nykthos Ramp, which is why this card has been popular recently. It is a good commander card though. You see this in Attracts a Praetor's Voice, as well as many other builds, including new ones again. Sometimes this is in Jota the Unifier. It is a good upgrade to the Dominara United Commander Deck Painbow. And it's in new builds around the front facing commander from there. Jared Carthalian. This could also see more play in the future because of a pair of meld cards coming in Brothers War. Let's take a look at them. 
Urza Lord Protector, the Might Stone, and Weak Stone meld to create Urza Planeswalker that you see on the right side there. If you do have enough mana to use the Chain Veil the same turn that you meld, you could do something like activate the ultimate right away and Urza Planeswalker. Next is Gonti's Ether Heart. This is up $226 to $7.30. This has been seeing some increased commander play recently around a card from Legends Legacy. The card is the Peregrine Dynamo. I'm also seeing some players adding this to one of the Warhammer 40k commander decks, Necron Dynasties, or putting it in fresh builds around a card from there, Imotek the Stormlord. But the main reason this is moving the way it is right now ties into a Brothers War preview from one of the commander decks. The card I'm talking about is the front-facing commander for the Mishra's Burnished Banner deck. And let's take a look at it. Mishra Eminent 1. First, I'll point out that it's in a classic card frame, and that's because all the cards in both of the Brothers War Commander decks are going to be in classic frames. Now, quickly, when it comes to the combo, if you have this in play as well as Gonti's Ether Heart, you just go ahead and move to combat. And then, as long as you can make just one more artifact, and it doesn't have to be cast necessarily, as long as an artifact can get into play, that could be a token creation, you would then be able to sacrifice the token created with this card to get an extra turn. And as long as you can consistently keep making that extra artifact every turn, then you would go infinite. There's a lot of options, but for example, if you had Karn Living Legacy in play, you could create a tapped Power Stone token. This one's especially cool too, because eventually it could be your win condition as well. Shulane Teller of Tales is next. The Throne of Eldraine foil copy, which came in the Wild Bounty Brawl deck, is up 274 to 1024. The regular non-foil copy from Throne of Eldraine, which came in the Collector Booster Packs, is up 290 to 999 this week. Now, this was in the list just for Zendikar Rising. That copy is creeping up a little bit, but did not hit the $2 threshold this week. When it comes to gameplay, it's a popular commander. Now it is seeing more play in the 99 of new builds, including Jota the Unifier. And to a much lesser degree, Jeddah Ojan and Mercenary, which is one of the box toppers from Dominari United. Additionally, Chilane is a good upgrade to Painbow and in new builds around Jared Carthalian. And on top of all that, there was a Commander Clash episode on MTG Goldfish this week that featured two decks with this card. One was a Chilane deck, the other one was a Jota the Unifier deck that was running Chilane. That might have brought a little more attention to the card this week. Last card in this section is Scape Shift, the original Morning Tide copy. It's up 630 to 2823. Remember, Dominari United did bring more support just in general for lands, and this is seeing a little more modern play. It's in Titan Shift, Teamer Control, and Bring to Light Scape Shift there. This is also getting increased commander play now. It's in builds around a couple new cards from Dominari United, Hazazan Shaper of Sand, that one's a box topper, and Soul of Wind Grace. And that's going to take us to the Modern Legal Spotlight. we got some cards going down, some cards going up. Let's see what's happening here. Doubling Season from Ravnica City of Guilds. It goes down 276 this week to 89.99. Huge Commander card that is retracting a little bit after some recent increases. It's in a lot of builds, including a Tracks of Praetor's Voice. And it's in a number of new Commander decks, too. Jota the Unifier. It's also a great upgrade to the Warhammer 40k Commander deck, Tyranid Swarm. And it is being used in fresh builds around the front face and Commander from there, the Swarm Lord. Bloodstained Mire, the original one from Onslaught, is down 280 to 7295. There's two other original fetch lands that are moving up this week. You're going to see them in just a few moments. This one, trending down a little bit. I would imagine that this retraction will be temporary since this sees a huge amount of play in a lot of formats. Modern, Legacy, it's found in many commander builds, old and new. This even sees a little vintage play at times. Kozilek Butcher of Truth from Modern Masters 2015. It goes down 296 this week to 44.99. This was in the list for Strixhaven and Modern Horizons 2, but the reason the card has been so soft recently is because it was reprinted in Double Masters 2022. Now in Modern, you see this in Dice Factory Tron, sometimes Mono Green Tron. It's also a solid commander card in lots of decks, including Kozilek the Great Distortion, and it's a good upgrade to the Legends Legacy deck too. Plus, I've seen this in new builds around a couple cards from there, the Hada Binder of Wills and the Peregrine Dynamo. Gemstone Caverns, this is the one from Time Spiral. It goes down 356 this week to 4199. Now, this copy's retracting again after some recent increases. It was part of the list for Adventures in the Forgotten Realms through Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. In fact, that copy is moving up this week, and we're going to see it in just a moment. So, when it comes to gameplay, what's happening with this card? Well, it still gets a lot of play. In Modern, it's in Calibrated Blast, 
card in scales, sometimes crushing footfalls and dredge as well as other decks, this is also getting a good amount of commander play in a variety of builds. Ulamog the Infinite Gyre from Rise of the Eldrazi, down 379 this week to 4653. This was also reprinted in Double Masters 2022. It's in many commander decks, including Kozilek the Great Distortion, and I have seen this in some builds around the Peregrine Dynamo from Legends Legacy. Last card moving down today is Scion of Draco. Now, this is the copy from the list. It's going down 1412 to 999 after a very egregious spike last week. And that big spike was really due to the fact that this just joined the list with Dominari United. There weren't many cards for sale online last week. The prices of the ones that were for sale were just outrageous. So we got artificial inflation. This week, some more copies are getting into the marketplace, and that price is coming down, as you can see. So why was this card hot to begin with? Well, it was because Dominari United brought back Domain in Modern. This is in the Domain deck there. The build's been performing very well and gaining momentum. It runs two cards from Dominari United, Nishoba Brawler and Leyline Binding. You also see Sign of Draco and Calibrated Blast there too. And this card gets a good amount of commander play as well. It's in the Ur Dragon and other builds. Some of those builds happen to be new ones like Jota the Unifier, Nael Ebizoa Aeronaut, and it's a good upgrade to the Painbow deck as well. Plus, it's in fresh builds around Jared Carthalian and Jensen Carthalian Druid Exile from there. All right, as promised, the first card moving up in this section is Gemstone Caverns from the list. It goes up 232 this week to 4429. Sword of Fire and Ice from Double Masters. Now, this has been losing value recently, starting to see a little more play again and starting to creep up, as you can see, up 239 to 5360. In Modern, you see this in Boros Death and Taxes, Boros and Orzov Stoneblade. In Legacy, it's in Mono White Hammer Time. And it is a solid commander card getting more play now around a couple Dominar United cards. Astor Bearer of Blades and Tetsuo Imperial Champion. That one's another box topper. Also, Brothers War is going to bring cards that play well with this, no doubt. Here are a couple of examples that we've already seen previewed. The first one is Queen Caleb and Krug from the main set. The second one is Urza Chief Artificer, and that is the front-facing commander for the Urza's Iron Alliance commander deck. Denizen of the Deep, the Portal Second Age copy is up 254 this week to 1742. So this copy has been very turbulent and the price is inflated due to scarcity online. No one's really paying this for the card. It does get a tad bit of commander play, though. Here's another original Onslaught Fetch Land, Polluted Delta. It's up 254 this week to 97.49. This sees extensive play in Modern Legacy and Vintage, and it is a huge commander land in many builds, old and new. Flusterstorm from Commander is up 266 to 36.65. Big sideboard card in Modern and can show up in main decks and sideboards in Legacy and Vintage. It is an answer to Storm Strategies, and those have been more popular recently. It does get a good amount of Commander play as well in various builds. Ardent Plea is next. It goes up to 93 to 969. This is moving because of Modern. The Crashing Footfalls deck has been performing very well for a long time, but recently it has been getting even better in the meta. And that's because of Leyline Binding now being added to those decks. And they also run three or four, typically four copies of this card here, Ardent Plea. As a matter of fact, Channel Fireball updated their modern power rankings this week, and the Crashing Footfalls deck came in at number two. Additionally, Ardent Plea does see a tad bit of commander play as well. And we have one more original fetch land from Onslaught. This is Windswept Heath. It goes up 314 to 6164. This one gets a little vintage play, but like the others, it gets extensive play in modern and legacy. Plus, it's in many commander builds, old and new. And the last card in this section is Marlin of the Morn Song. This goes up 351 this week to 3212. And yes, my one per video is going to make it three weeks in a row. This is a Morning Tide Rare that's yet to be reprinted. And if you watch these videos, you already know this. But during this time period in Magic, there was a recession in the game. Less packs were cracked, which means when people start to pay attention to these rares that have not been reprinted, they can get a little spiky. So why are people looking at this one now? Well, it's a fairly popular commander, and it's in the 99 of some builds too. The Marlin commander builds typically run Opposition Agent. Now, though, there's some newer cards that are enhancing them. Things like Braids Arisen Nightmare, Packed Weapon, and Black Market Connections. This is also seeing a little additional commander play now around a card from the Painbow deck, Arkelos Lagoon Mystic. 
And that takes us to the Vintage Spotlight. This is where we talk about cards that see play in Vintage, Legacy, or cards that are just popular among collectors this week. Prices in this section may be a little more reminiscent of what you might see on a price tracking website, because at least for some of the cards, there might not be a lot of sales in any given week. And in those cases, we do have to lean a little bit harder on asking price. Also, for the older, more iconic Magic cards in this section, the price you see might fall somewhere in between the price of a high-grade raw and high-grade graded copy. Now, if that price that you see is not at least close to the middle in those examples, or just in general, if the price is not matching up with recent sales, I will point that out. First is Phyrexian Dreadnought for Mirage. It goes up 331 this week to $99. This is in Legacy Stifle Knot. Gets a little commander play too. Scrubland from Revised is up 335 this week to 352.42. Mox Opal from Modern Masters 2015. It goes up 449 this week to 79.80. In Legacy, this is an 8 cast painter and more. Vintage, you see this in Paradoxical Outcome. And this is in a lot of commander decks, including some new ones. Maria, Scholar of Antiquity from Dominar United. It's also a good upgrade to the Warhammer 40k commander deck, Necron Dynasties. And it's in many new builds around a card from there. Trazen the Infinite. Show and Tell from Urza Saga is up 1077 this week to 39.99. This copy dried up online this week, but the one from Conspiracy Take the Crown really didn't move much at all. The card is found in Legacy Sneak and Show and Omnitel, and I have seen some players getting this as an upgrade to the Warhammer 40k Commander deck, The Ruinous Powers. Others are putting it in fresh builds around Bellicor the Dark Master from there. But the big reason this is jumping the way it is right now is because it was just unbanned in pre-modern. Taiga from Revised goes up 1243 this week to 41999. Palladium Ore is the original copy from Legends, goes up 1769 to 8488. This is getting reprinted now in the Showcase Dominari United Secret Layer. A lot of cards here from Unlimited this week. This is Armageddon from that set. In fact, all the other white border cards in this section are from Unlimited, so I won't keep saying that. Just know if you see a white border card in this section, it is from there. This one, though, is going up 1813 to 125.93. Cockatrice is up 1832 to 59.85. Berserk is up 2328 to $156.61. This was reprinted in the Artist Series Vulcan Baga Secret Layer. Lifeblood is up 2329 to 108.99 this week. Fungasaur is up 32.55 to 99.55. Is that for real? Well, high grade raw copies can go for around $35. I've not seen any high grade graded copies sell for a while, but one could hit this price. Birds of Paradise up 3402 to 282.48. Is that for real? Well, believe it or not, this is a little low. I have seen high grade raw copies sell between three and $400. I have not seen a high grade graded copy sell for a while, but obviously when one does, it will go for even more. Brain Geyser. This is up $133.50 to $300, or is it? Well, high grade raw sell between $200 and $300. Again, I have not seen a high grade graded copy sell for a bit, but when one does, it's going to go for more. Last card in this section is Mahamadi Jin, up $149.64 to $248.02. Is that real? Well, high-grade raws can sell for around 160. Haven't seen a high-grade graded copy of this sell recently either, but when one does, should be able to get at least close to this. And that takes us to the Commander Spotlight. So all the cards in this section are moving, at least in part because of Commander. However, there could be other drivers as well, and sometimes Commander might not even be the key driver. I'll let you know though as we go through. Ristic Study from Prophecy up 202 to 4108. This is a huge commander staple found in many builds, including new ones like Jota the Unifier. It's a good upgrade to the Warhammer 40k Tyranid Swarm deck, and I have seen this in some fresh builds around a card from there, Gyerson Star and Keller Morph. Pretty much though, if you're playing blue in commander, you probably want a copy of this in your deck. Scytherix the Blight Dragon. This is the copy from the list that's up 207 to 1889, and this was in the list from Zendikar Rising through Midnight Hunt. It is a fairly popular commander and in the 99 of some builds like Attracts the Praetor's Voice. And it's in a couple new builds around cards from Dominar United too. The box topper Savitri Dragon Master. And occasionally you see this in Jota the Unifier builds. City of Shadows up 219 this week to $100.99. This card continues to remain super turbulent after a series of buyouts and sell-offs that have occurred over the last few years. 
It does see a tad bit of commander play, though. Black Cleave Cliffs from Scars of Meriden goes up 220 this week to 1993. It does get a little commander play. I have seen some adding this to the Warhammer 40k The Ruinous Powers deck, and I have seen it in fresh builds around a card from there. Lucius the Eternal. Modern, though, is the key driver here. It's in Rakdos Midrange Scam, Jund, and more. Lathro Blade of the Elves. This is the foil copy found in the Keldheim Elven Empire Commander deck. It goes up 222 this week to 649. Now, since this came out, it's been the most popular Elf Commander, but it can be in the 99 of some other Elf Commander decks too, including one based around a new card, Jota the Unifier. There were some new Elves in Dominar United 2 that are pushing some of these Commander builds, including a very good rare creature in the main set, Leaf Crowned Visionary. Hieronicus's Vile Duplication up 225 this week to 499. It is seeing a lot more Commander playing now around a new card from Dominar United. That card is Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief. Also, many players are getting this to upgrade the Warhammer 40k The Ruinous Powers deck. Others are putting it in fresh builds around a couple cards from there. Bellacord the Dark Master and Magus the Red. Deflecting Swat is up 238 this week to 5397. Big Commander card in lots of different decks, including a new one around a Dominar United box topper, Torwoki the Younger. Piracy, the Portal Second Age copy, a little dry online this week. It's up 249 to 3329. It does see a tad bit of Commander play. Norwood Priestess from Portal Second Age up 252 to 11813. This does not see much play to speak of, but it is an older card yet to be reprinted. Vainwitch Coven up 260 to 779. It is seeing more Commander play now in a new build, Shieldred the Apocalypse. Shabraz the Sky Shark. This is the copy from the list that was only there for Kel time. It goes up 276 this week to 1311. It is a fairly popular commander with Brawlin Sky Shark Rider, but it's also in the 99 of a couple new builds at times. Shanna Purifying Blade and Jota the Unifier. Lord Wingrace up 402 to 1210. This only comes in foil. It's a popular commander and it is seeing more play now thanks to the support for lands that came from Dominari United. It's in some new builds in Commander, Soul of Wind Grace. I've seen this in some Joe to the Unifier decks. And it is a good upgrade to Pain Bow, or something to put in a new build around Jared Carthalian from there. Spirit of Resistance, an older card yet to be reprinted. It goes up 568 this week to 1523. It is another good upgrade to Pain Bow. I've seen it in fresh builds around both Jared and Jensen from there. And occasionally it's in another new Commander deck too, Joe to the Unifier. Memory Jar from Urza's Legacy up 763 this week to 6618. It is getting additional commander play in Shield of the Apocalypse builds. And the last card in the section is the Ur Dragon from Commander 2017. This copy only comes in foil. It goes up 868 this week to 9272. It is the most used Dragon Commander and can show up in the 99 of Dragon builds occasionally too. It got hot when Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate and Dominar United both brought more support for the Dragon Tribe. And it is still jumping this week, as you can see. It is in some dragon-centric Joe to the Unifier commander builds now, too. That brings us to the premium spotlight. Now, you know, every week there's tons of premium cards jumping, crashing. We can't possibly cover all of it. There's tons of turbulence in that part of the market. I chose one card this week. We talked about it last week. Spirit of Resistance. This is the Invasion Foil, in theory, going up $324.99 to $375. But... Because there's not a lot of sales for a card like this online. And these asking prices may be a tad bit outrageous right now. It is moving up, but not to the degree you're seeing here. So what do these truly sell for? Well, last week, a high-grade raw copy could go for around $35. This week, they're close to 100 So the card is spiking. The card's jumping up a lot. Just not this much. I did see one graded 9 sell at the start of the week for about $70 but I would expect future graded sales to be higher. Still not this high, though. That's going to do it for this episode of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. If you're still here at the end, hey, thanks for sticking with me. Until next time, stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page, as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.